Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to join me for the video today. In it, I'm gonna look at the top 15 players at the tight end position for fantasy football. We are gearing up to prepare for our drafts and I wanna make sure you have all the information you need to dominate your opponents. Now, before we get into all of that, if you are new to the channel, if you haven't done it yet, for whatever reason, or if you've enjoyed content from me in the past, a like and subscribe would be so very appreciated. To all of my current subscribers out there, thank you, I could not do it without you. Now with that done, let's get into this version and the first of 2022's tight end rankings. I decided to break the top 15 up into three separate tiers. Tier three are those I view as dependable options that do lack some significant upside. There is obviously more risk here as well as multiple issues could arise and knock them down a peg or two. In tier number two, the players are just outside of the elite, though many of them I think could take that leap next season. The concerns here are smaller, the upside is bigger, and if things fall just right, they could challenge for a spot in the top five. The dependability in my first tier cannot be matched. This is a group that is going to show up and produce. They provide weak winning upside, especially in the desert wasteland, also known as the tight end position. If you can get any one of these players at value or even better yet, at a discount, come draft day, do not hesitate. Life is way too short to pass up on a cheap tight end that can help you win your league. We start at tier three and number 15 is Hunter Henry. And while the Patriots declined to adequately address the lack of receiving options in New England in the off season, this is actually excellent news for Henry. Only Devontae Parker was added to steal opportunities from him, and he's had issues both with production and with staying healthy. That means that once again, there are going to be plenty for Henry to vacuum up. New England is not necessarily gonna score a ton of points this season, but when they are in the red zone, Henry is their go-to option through the air. After he scored nine touchdowns in 2021, he's got a decent shot to threaten double-digit scores once again. It is gonna be a gamble playing him from week to week due to that lack of consistent production in the yardage department. But what else is new at tight end? Henry provides more stable touchdown upside than most, and that is what gets him on this list. To number 14, and it is Cole Komet out of Chicago. And there's a lot to like about him, but plenty that scares me as well. The good? Well, he should be the number two target in the passing game as the Bears also fail to bring in anyone of note into the building. The offense should also be better as well without having to fight themselves in an effort to follow Matt Nagy's game plans. The development of Justin Fields is also gonna help Chicago take a step forward. Now, the bad is that this is still the Chicago Bears and even a big leap forward on this offense leaves them in the bottom half of the league. With the lack of firepower, the added targets could be low quality ones, and Komet may see added attention without a lot that defenses have to account for. It means that there's quite a range of outcomes for Komet, making him a riskier pick than many would like at this level. It is a dice roll for sure, but it could be a hit. I have Robert Tanyan in as my lucky number 13. And while a lot may not have gone right for Green Bay on the offensive side of the ball in the offseason, none of that is going to have a negative impact on Tanyan's 2022 prospects. 224 targets were vacated when Devontae Adams and Marquez Valdez-Scantling left town, which opens up a ton of opportunities for him. While I expect Green Bay to go to the ground far more often this season, when they do go to the air, there is not gonna be a ton of competition for targets. Green Bay's offense likely will still have touchdown upside, and that is what you look for at this position. Christian Watson probably gets the lion's share, but it is very possible that Tanyan is number two on a short list. When you take into consideration the trust issues that Aaron Rodgers has and the already established rapport with Tanyan, there is a lot to be excited 
excited about here for owners. Robert was expected to break out last year before his injury after we cut glimpses of it to finish 2020. It is likely that this is his year to do so, and if he can stay healthy for the pack, I believe he will. My 12th ranked player is Zach Ertz, who fit in quite nicely in Arizona's offense last year after coming over from Philly, and I expect that that is going to continue to 2022. With New Hopkins out for the first six games of the season, Ertz is destined to see an increase in targets early on. He is likely going to be a sell-high candidate because of that, which is a plus for savvy owners. You can never have enough options available to take advantage of. With pass catching back Chase Edmonds gone in free agency, Ertz is going to be the prime safety valve. Tack on a quarterback who is hungry for an extension and a solid role in a good offense, and there is plenty to like about Ertz. He has already shown a good connection with Kyler Murray as well, which should grow with a full offseason together. There is plenty of upside in Arizona for Zach to capitalize on. I have Dallas Goddard, his former teammate, up at 11, and you have to feel sorry for the guy at least a little bit. After finally ridding himself of the aforementioned Ertz, a breakout was fully underway. As the number two option in Philly's passing attack, Goddard thrived and enjoyed the best season of his career. He finished seventh at the position last season. That top 10 success, though, is likely going to be short-lived. After making a trade for A.J. Brown, the targets for Eagles pass catchers are going to be much harder to come by. Already one of the most run-heavy teams in the league, that is a serious ding for Goddard's 2022 prospects. I do like his chances of being more efficient with better defensive matchups, and Goddard has the talent to win in those plus situations. Opponents are going to key on stopping A.J. Brown, but I believe the volume decrease here could be pretty substantial. If... Jalen Hurts can take a big leap forward as a passer. There is hope that Dallas can replicate his finish from last season. But I expect a step back statistically with more important mouths to feed in Philadelphia's passing attack. The first player in my top 10 is Mike Jasicki, and I am not going to lie, he was a little bit difficult to rank. If we look on the plus side, the offense is going to be light years ahead of where it was last season. Weapons were improved everywhere, and a massively upgraded offensive line means that Miami could have a fairly potent attack. However, those additions are likely to eat away at Jasicki's slice of the pie. Tyreek Hill is not going to see nearly the 160 targets that he did last year, but I doubt that he drops below 130. That means it is going to be difficult for Jasicki to get back to 100 targets in 2022. Like Goddard, the efficiency and the production that he gets from the targets should rise. So I think that it evens out and we see another solid year from the fifth year tight end. He has already shown himself to be one of Tua's favorite targets and a dependable one at that. He could triple his touchdown total from last season in an improved offense. Pat Fryermuth is next at number 9 and he enjoyed a breakout to end last season after Eric Ebron went down with an injury. From weeks 8 to 14, he scored in all but two games and he totaled six touchdowns in them. He should be primed to continue that success, though the step back at quarterback is certainly concerning. Now that being said, Ben Roethlisberger looks poorer and poorer as the season wore on, so the downgrade may not be all that extreme. This offense is going to need playmakers, and Fryermuth is going to be option number three in that category behind only Najee Harris and Deontay Johnson. Pat has only begun to ascend, and he could surprise in 2022 if we get more from Kenny Pickett or Mitch Trubisky than expected. We have made it to tier number two, and it starts at eight with TJ Hawkinson. And before missing the final five games of 2021, Hawkinson was well on his way to another solid campaign. It should be more of the same this coming year, as all of a sudden, the Lions offense could actually have some bite. We will need to keep an eye on Jamison Williams' health as we get closer to the season starting as his availability is greatly going to affect Hawkinson's outlook. Williams is going to siphon targets, but I do not anticipate him being at 100% early on in the year. As he works himself back, Hawkinson is going to be free to terrorize the middle of the field. With Amon Ross St. Brown exploding onto the scene right as TJ went down with that injury and a healthy DeAndre Swift returning as well, there is some upside in Detroit. 
even with Jared Goff holding them back. The Hawk Block is going to be right in the middle of it and he will bounce back with a top 10 finish in 2022. If the chips fall right, a top five finish is certainly a possibility. To Dallas for number seven, and it is none other than Dalton Schultz, who had an absolutely excellent offseason. He saw the window of opportunity burst wide open. With Amari Cooper going to Cleveland in a salary dump move, Schultz is going to get even more looks after setting a career high with 104 targets in 2021. With Dallas scoring more points than anybody last year, this is a really positive outlook for him. Schultz is Dallas's best option in the red zone, and he will have tons of chances to replicate his breakout season. A step forward is quite possible, and Dalton could sniff a thousand yards if the Cowboys offense continues to hum. Schultz also hit 43 yards or more 12 times in 2021, so the dreaded goose is not an issue with him. He also scored in three out of his last four to end the year. There is top five upside for Schultz and a week to week floor that few other tight ends can match. Moving on at six, I have Dawson Knox. And when Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley left in free agency, it freed up 184 targets in one of the best passing attacks in the league. Enter Knox who will happily eat up a ton of those. After barely cracking 70 targets last year, 100 is well within his range of outcomes this year. That increased volume, combined with his stellar 69% catch rate from 2021, means that big things are in store. I do have a concern about his week-to-week -week viability, as there were some real stinkers for owners last year. But the upside in this offense as the number three option is well worth the risk. Josh Allen is going to feed Knox when the Bills are in close, and he has shown some incredible hands and body control in the red zone to earn Allen's trust. Dawson should once again flirt with double-digit scores, as Buffalo puts up 30-plus on pretty much everyone they face next year. In at number five, I have Kyle Pitts, and we have now made it to tier one, the cream of the crop. Pitts set the league on fire in a trash can Atlanta offense last year, and while the Falcons downgraded at quarterback after trading away Matt Ryan, at least Pitts got some help in the form of number eight overall pick Drake London. After coming up just 50 yards short of Mike Ditka's 60-year-old rookie tight end receiving yard record, Kyle is ready for an encore. He is going to be the alpha, at least for a while, on a team that is going to be behind and throwing the ball a ton. I expect the same amount of targets to come his way, if not more, after Russell Gage left for Tampa Bay. The Falcons are not going to be good, but the volume here will be, and garbage points are a distinct possibility. No matter where they're scored or when they're scored, they still count, and with another year to learn the ropes, Pitts' game is bound to elevate. He probably won't threaten the top three, but I do not think it's impossible. My fourth ranked player and someone I had a really hard time finding a spot for is Darren Waller. Because on one hand, the Raiders just added Devontae Adams and his 318 targets over the last two seasons. Hunter Renfro also broke out at the end of 2021 when Waller was injured. So there is valid concerns for his target share. Now on the other, the Raiders offense is beyond stacked and they have all the tools in the arsenal to be a top five offense. That means more scoring opportunities and fewer defenders keying in on one of the best tight ends in the game. Waller will not sniff the peak 145 targets that he saw in 2020, but he was able to produce well over 1100 yards with just 117 looks in 2019. That seems like a reasonable expectation to me, and Waller was the tight end three in that season. If he stays healthy, Waller could set career highs across the board and remind everyone why he was considered one of the top three tight ends heading into draft day last year. In at number three, my next player is George Kittle. The biggest and really only concern that I have with Kittle is availability. He's been unable to string together a fully healthy year since 2018. Even so, he was able to finish as tight end three last year, missing three games, so he cannot be knocked too much for it. 
Some may worry about his viability with the anticipated swap of Trey Lance at quarterback, but I am not among them. Lance may struggle early on a bit with accuracy, but eventually I believe that is going to be a big upgrade for the 49ers offense as a whole, and sooner rather than later. Kittle possesses the ability to win you your week anytime he's in the lineup. He is elite after the catch and has scored five touchdowns or more in every year that he started at least nine games. This season, Kittle surpasses a thousand yards with ease and he puts the injury bug concerns to rest. Mark Andrews is up next at number two and I really wanted to keep Andrews in the well-deserved number one spot that he earned last year, but after the offseason, I just could not do it. Not that it was a bad offseason for Andrews, who saw his biggest competition leave in a draft day trade. With Hollywood now residing in Arizona, Andrews is the top dog in the Ravens passing attack. I know that Rashad Bateman is going to get his, but Andrews is the bona fide Robin to Lamar Jackson's Batman, and it is not even close. Andrews finished last season off on fire, going for 85 yards or more in five straight while scoring four times. His consistency set the pace for the league with just one game under 40 yards all season long. Now for reference, Travis Kelsey had six such occasions. After nearly doubling his production from 2020 to 2021, is it really that out of the question that Marky Mark hits 1,500 yards? I think not. Which brings us meandering slowly to number one and Travis Kelsey who is back on top and it is no mystery why. No Tyree kill in Kansas City means that Kelsey gets the number one role in the Chiefs offense all to himself. The target share here is going to be massive, and Kelsey has a legit shot to lead the league in balls thrown in his direction. I do think that Casey's offense takes a step back as a whole, but it will still put up numbers and score plenty of points. They will do so with Kelsey as the centerpiece, and that is a great place to be with one of the game's best young quarterbacks throwing you the rock. Kelsey will not only reach double digit scores this season, but he could also threaten his career high of 1,416 yards set in 2020. It is gonna be a race to the final week with Andrews to see if he can reclaim that top spot on the mountain, but I will take the history of excellence and domination with the better quarterback in that climb. Kelsey is the number one tight end in fantasy football for 2022. And that is my list for you guys today. Keep an eye out, I will be dropping running backs, I have quarterbacks and wide receivers coming to you as well. During the off season as we head into fantasy football draft day, I'm also going to be sure to get you guys some mid round pick information on some of my favorites in that draft range. So keep an eye closed to Relentless Press in the coming months. As always, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscribe. The support I get means so very much. It helps me out a ton and enables me to do what I love so I can keep bringing you guys the content that you love. This is Relentless Press. I'm your host, Abraham Opatz, and we will see you 